a Dread Fun original production. Please sit back and enjoy. Hey guys, Dread Fun here with another one of my time lapse video uploads. Doing things a little bit different. We're going to see if this works out. I uh, got a camera, or got the, the actual uh, film going on here, and I'm talking to you folks there. Uh, Mad Max, uh, Tom Hardy doing my realistic pencil uh, on a comic book cover, uh, Vertical Issue number 1, Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, one thing I want to get off right away, it's kind of hard to draw on uh, certain kinds of comic book blank covers. Uh, anybody that's ever tried it knows that on occasion you have to deal with uh, like glossy sort of uh, material that's on the outside and it can affect things. Um, you know, if you're using ink or Copic markers or Coptic markers, whatever they're called, uh, it, you can you can do all kinds of stuff with that. But for for what I'm doing here is I'm trying to do my realistic pencils uh, and sort of do my one pencil approach on one of these comic covers. So I got Tom, as you see, I'm I'm darkening everything up now. Uh, what I like to do is it's almost a topographical look. I will, uh, if you were watching at the start of the movie, I have little uh, measurement lines that, that I, I lay down to give me a guide of where it is that I'm going to go from. Uh, I, I developed this uh, using the grid method, so like I used to grid out a lot of drawings and then just enlarge them, shrink them depending on whatever I wanted. So um, the style that I use now is just a progression. When you're doing a, a portrait or a face, uh, I say it a million times to the point where I'm sick of saying it. Uh, you only have to have the nose, eyes, mouth ratio, and kind of a rough uh, guess of where you're going to put everything else. And for me, what I do there is uh, I then, like I said, it's almost like a road map. I lay out the lines, starting with the eyes, going all the way around, and I'm using my, I guess it's like spatial distance. I'm able to see from that, that single mark where it is that I'm building everything out. Because uh, really, I found that in doing portrait work, um, it's the uh, the abnormalities and the the unsymmetricalness. I don't know. I'm making up words, but uh, <laughs> basically, the the stuff that uh, makes Tom look like Tom um, really uh, they're little imperfections. Now, I mean, uh, to, like, I'm not saying he's imperfect or imperfect in any way. As you can see, as I'm detailing his lovely nose, he's a handsome fellow. And um, it was really uh, crucial that I, I got this, uh, this image down right. And uh, I've drawn Tom in the past. And one thing I noticed uh, from drawing him, he's got a, he's got a hooded look to his eyes. Um, a lot of uh, people of uh, Irish, English, and ancestry, they got that, uh, it's like a, a hood that fits over the, the fold of the eye. And uh, I myself have something like that too. So, depending on how he's looking at the camera, it can change the shape of his eyes. And in the other drawings, I always felt I didn't get his eyes right. So, with this one, it was really crucial. Once I had uh, a rough idea all laid out in light, I knew when I started darkening it that uh, really all I'd have to focus on is, is how much uh, graphite I put into the image, which I'm then going to take out later, as you're going to see. Um, you know, a, a lot of it really is, is cross hatching. Uh, you can see right around Matt, uh, Tom Hardy's lips there. Um, it's just s simple hatching. I haven't smudged that at all. Right there, I ran across it with my finger. I then go over it with a brush and um, really try to smooth it out. Now, the thing is, though, a lot of people use uh, certain smudging techniques, certain smudging uh, little uh, sticks. I, I don't, I just use a brush in my hand my finger, I find that it gives me a more, you know, I don't know, a little more control. When I'm doing the forehead, right up in there, you can see that a lot of it is, I'm going back and forth, I'm coming at it from one angle and then another angle. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm, I'm conscious of uh, the shape of the human head. Uh, everybody's muscles are different and our skulls are different, but uh, the way they all fit together are very, very uh, similar. So certain, you know, cheekbones are going to have a, a way that they contour, and if you've drawn them enough, uh, you can, it's almost like a shorthand. A comic artist that's drawn Superman flying through the air a million times, he's going to be able to call upon that image, uh, snap, snap, real quick, because it's in his brain, he's done it a lot. If he's never drawn Superman 
sort of hanging out in a park with a little kid, you know, he might have to put a little extra into that because he's never shown Superman in that less dynamic way. Anyways, back to the drawing. So, yeah, um, again, uh, one thing I also noticed was uh, it's not that he has feminine lips. Uh, he has full lips. He's got very full, uh, almost like a, a pouty look to him, to his to his face here. It's like he's, smol uh, what do you call that, smoldering. What do they call that in uh, Zoolander? Blue Steel. <laughs> but anyways, it, it was tough. And um, as I'm doing this, I am nervously having a hard time looking up at the top of the drawing. As you see, I haven't touched the head or the hair at all. Uh, I watched the Mad Max movie, and even though I liked it, I didn't necessarily believe that he was uh, Max Rock and Tansky. Uh, I guess Mel Gibson's ingrained in my brain. I watched that Road Warrior movie years ago. Oh, this is an awesome part here. I'm adding stubble. Uh, I like to add stubble and facial hair after I have the underlining skin down. It's neat. It's something I like to do because I like to look at people's faces if they have facial hair and see what they look like without facial hair. Uh, weird little quirk I have. Um, so it's always fun, especially with the stubble. Here I go. I start laying in the hair. And the reason why I was concerned is in the movie, he doesn't exactly have a professional haircut done. Uh, he's chased by a bunch of psychopaths, and they hold him down and just sort of bean him off. So I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get the right kind of uh, look to it. But yeah, again, a lot of smudging. Um, the way I approach hair is uh, messy. Messy is better, but it's like a con con uh, controlled chaos. You can see that I've left certain parts of the scalp uh, uh, sort of peeking through, and that's kind of what it looks like in, in, the, in the movie. You can see certain parts of the skull have been... Uh, shaved closer to the, the head, or shorn closer to the head, whatever. So yeah, now I'm, you know, getting all the little flips up here. And uh, another thing is, uh, i got to get ready, and uh, I'm going to start removing some of this graphite with my eraser. It's a pliable eraser that I use, and I will go in there in certain areas, like around the nose, especially the eyes, uh, highlights on the lips, and anywhere else that I think it might add to the drawing. I will then pull that graphite out using uh, that eraser. It happens pretty quick. You probably won't see much of it, but uh, it's something that really, uh, really does add to the drawing. Unfortunately, with these comic book covers, it's not as dramatic as it is with uh, the paper that I use for my custom work. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, you can pass it on to uh, other folks, uh, you know. Uh, don't forget to press that notification button in the corner there, and you can be notified every time DreadFun loads up another uh, one of my fantastic illustrations. So I uh, hope you guys like this. DreadFun out. This has been a DreadFun.com production. Thanks for watching.